Greetings, Truth Seekers, and welcome back to Truth Fed. I'm Sean. The website is www.truthfed.com, and today is May 12th, Thursday, 2016, and every week the madness continues, the decline continues. I'm just amazed, and maybe some of you are too. You know, I've I've said uh, several times that while I anticipated anticipated a lot of the natural disasters and things like that, uh, and the wars, and you know, the rise of the you know one world system and one world religion, you know, we all kind of expected that, right? Because Jesus warned us about that. Uh, but like I've mentioned several times, I guess I just wasn't prepared for how just terrible or just how deep into immorality our culture uh, would go. Um, I'm amazed. You know, I see some of these stories and then I'll go to the comments and just see what people in general are saying. And I'm amazed at how many people literally try to justify wickedness. Uh, I'm, I'm just blown away away by the things going on but uh you know our hope's not in this world our hope is in the coming mashiach our savior who's uh you know who died for our sins and we're looking for him to come at any moment and i really really believe that we're in a period of time i i just i don't see how it would be possible that we are not the generation uh, that jesus spoke about because there's so many signs that we've seen come to pass. Uh, one of them that you've probably seen a lot uh, over the last couple of years is uh, the dead fish, right? Uh, there's an article by Michael Snyder who says, All of a sudden fish are dying by the millions all over the planet. And this has been going on for a couple of years, and I've covered it several times. Uh, but real quick, it says, Why are millions upon millions of dead sea creatures suddenly washing up on beaches all over the world. It is certainly not unusual for fish and other inhabitants of our ocean to die. This happens all the time. But over the past month, we have seen a series of extremely alarming mass death death incidents all over the planet. Um, As you will see below, many of these mass death incidents have involved more than 30 30 tons, friends. 30 tons of fish in places such as Chile, Vietnam. It has already gotten to the level where it has started to become a major national crisis. People see their coastlines absolutely buried in Dead Sea creatures, and they're starting to freak out. And I'm sure you've seen the videos. You know, I I post videos all the time from, like, uh, Truth Shock and some other people who just uh, compile some of this information of just all the Dead Sea creatures. And, of course, we know that in Hosea, chapter 4, verse 3, it says, Therefore the land will mourn, and everyone who dwells there will waste away with the beasts of the field and the birds of the air, and even the fish of the sea will be taken away. Uh, So we know right there is just another prophecy that we are literally watching and not just the fish, you know, it says, and the birds of the air. How many videos have you seen where they're like, we don't know what happened. There's like, you know, a hundred dead birds here in this one spot. I mean, we see that kind of thing all the time. Now, people will argue, well, the fish are dying because of Fukushima or because of global warming or whatever scientific explanation they have. And I'm always like, who cares? I don't care what the reason is. The prophecy said that would happen. It didn't say, the prophecies never said that this is going to happen, but it won't have anything to do with mankind. Of course it has something to do with mankind. I mean, it's it's always such a ridiculous argument, but I'm sure you guys have heard it as well. Uh, You know, last week on Thursday, I was talking about how uh, there's the Christian censorship and how it's coming and how we need to to realize this fact and how it's actually already here. And I was kind of worrying about, and I talked about a few guys that's been having some trouble, um, you know, with that. And I've told you, you know, I've shared my stories with you, you know, as an example, um, truth fed, uh, the website, you know, Google's never want, never ranked the website. And let me just tell you somebody who, 
you know, before I started podcasting about these things, I was podcasting about internet marketing. So I know my stuff when it comes to internet marketing. I can build a website today and within 30 days, um, it'll be ranked by Google and be showing results in search results. My website, truthfed.com, has been there for, I think, over three years now. Never been ranked. So therefore, it's articles, you know, they don't get, you know, Google doesn't serve up the articles when people do Google searches. They're, they're suppressing the information. They do the same thing with my YouTube channel and some of the videos. They'll either hinder the, uh, the views or, or give the wrong um, number of views. I mean, have you ever seen where videos stuck on like 301 views for like forever? Um, they have, there's been videos that I've done a couple times. I did one about, you know, a couple of years ago. This is just one example. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was doing a lot of more news type videos and I was putting a lot of them up sometimes two or three a day and I had AdSense on them. Um, so that if, you know, when people clicked on the video, there would be an ad and, you know, that would generate income. Uh, well, I did a video about when these decapitations started and how the United States was involved uh, with, you know, weapons and stuff like that getting to the enemy. And Google immediately went in there, flagged it as um, copyright, even though there was no music, no nothing in there that could be considered copyright, and then took my ads away, put their own ads on there so that all, so that all the in generated income was going somewhere else and not to me. And they do that kind of stuff to discourage people. So I've eventually just stopped. Put, I don't even put ads on my videos anymore. As a matter of fact, I'm longing for the day that I move away from YouTube. Um, but this censorship is coming, folks. And what people don't realize, and I'm going to say something that's going to sound so radical to so many, but if you look through history, what comes after Christian censorship and the silencing of the people of God is, um, is, is usually followed by concentration camps and murder. So I'm just telling you that the hostility towards Christianity is really ramping up around the world. And, it's, and, if it, and in the countries where they're not being murdered, they're being censored, like they are in this country and like they are in Europe. Um, you probably heard about this article by now. Should be no surprise to anyone. Former Facebook workers, we routinely suppress conservative news. And, um, you know, I have Facebook up throughout the, throughout the whole day uh, because I use it to follow a bunch of people who cover end time news. And that's kind of how I, you know, keep up on what's going on. Uh, but I've always noticed that on the trending on the right hand side, it's always dumb stuff. Uh, just ridiculous stuff of no importance. Um, and it's always pushing that same old establishment agenda. So this is, I mean, we already knew that this was going on, but I guess some employees have come out and admitted it. Facebook workers routinely suppress news stories of interest to conservative readers from the social network's influential trending news section, according to a former journalist who worked on the project. No surprise there. We know that that kind of stuff is going on. I've talked about it um, often. Now, you, well, let me let me cover a couple more articles here. Justice Department expected to sue North Carolina. I'm still amazed. I, I this is one of the most shocking things for me that this kind of stuff would be happening in the United States. And that people wouldn't be standing up, and that the church wouldn't be demanding that this be this kind of stuff be stopped. But nothing's happening. The church is, like I've said, nowhere to be found. Silent. The church is either participating in the wickedness, or just completely silent. You know, the church stood by and said nothing and did nothing uh, when this country started murdering babies. It said nothing. It did nothing. When this country decided to redefine marriage. And now the church is doing nothing and saying nothing. 
as they're trying to allow men to go into the bathrooms with your daughters. Now listen, I've read the comments on some of this stuff, and there's actually people who come to the comments defending that if a man doesn't feel like he's a man, it should be no big deal for him to go into the girl's bathroom. I just, I can't believe that this is, we're fighting over bathroom rights? Over what, this is insane. This country has lost its mind, and the people have lost their minds. They're, they're literally mentally ill. And of course, people are going to call me names, because I dare to say that a man shouldn't be in a woman's bathroom. Back to the article. Due to North Carolina's expectation of privacy, the new North Carolina legislator pushed back against Charlton City Council's ordinance, which forced all business operating within the city to allow transgender individuals to use the bathroom of their choosing. Now, Obama says that he's going to start cutting funding uh, in the amounts of potential $2 billion to the state. Now, this is federal education funding. They're saying, well, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to fund your education system over there. Not unless you start uh, promoting that it's a great thing for transgenders. A court, listen to this, a court orders dad to start treating his 11, this is so stupid. Court orders dad to start treating his 11 year old daughter as a boy. Oh, this is just... I mean, this is where we're at. This exactly like Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, I've I've covered Sodom and Gomorrah with you guys out of the Book of Jasher. Two major things going on there. Number one, in just awful sexual immorality of every kind, and justice not going forth, meaning that the judges were always ruling in favor of wickedness and never in favor of righteousness. United States of America is a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah, maybe worse because we now have this thing called video and pornography in the internet, which the United States is responsible for about 80% of. Most of the world's pornography that's consumed comes from the United States. This has become a place of every foul spirit, a dwelling place of everything wicked and awful. I mean, that's just the reality, folks. People get upset. Oh, that's so unpatriotic. I'm not interested in whether or not you think I'm a patriot. What I'm interested in is the truth. Judgment is coming, folks. Harsh judgment is coming. Okay, there's a couple of passages that I want to cover with you. Everybody's familiar with Matthew 24. But I just want to reiterate a couple of things from verses 3 through 14. And then I want to read something out of the book of Habakkuk. It says, now that this is the signs of the times and the end of the age. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation kingdom against kingdom, and there'll be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginnings of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. You will be hated by all nations for my namesake. All right, now we were just talking about how hostility for Christianity is, is just really ramping up all over the world. Um, you see that there's literally a Christian holocaust taking place in the Middle East, and that's exactly what it is. There's literally Christian genocide taking place, but the media refuses to cover it because nobody cares. Even the church in America could care less, which is why I fear that the worst judgment is going to be reserved for the American church because the American so-called Christians have decided that they don't have time. They don't have five seconds to pray for their suffering brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, the judgment is coming and it's going to start in the house of God. Because it's not even really a house of the Lord. It's not really even, you know, it's just a, it's just an apostate church. That's coming, folks. Believe it. Verse 10. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and hate one another. We have a society, a culture that's offended by everything. Right? Just like this says. Many will be offended. Everything's offensive to someone. 
It's ridiculous. But of course, Jesus prophesied it. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. We see this, all these people who claim to be prophets on YouTube and they're full of it. How many pastors are leading people straight into the pits of hell with a false gospel, a watered-down false gospel? So right there, there's three things we can just put a check mark next to. Uh, we're going to be hated by all nations. Check. Uh, many will be offended and will betray one another and hate one another. Check. Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Check. Excuse me. And verse 12. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Check. We see the lawlessness now, right? Justice never goes forth. The judges are ruling in favor of wickedness. So all those things we can check off. Check, 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 check. We can even go back up to when Jesus was talking about the birth pains. Are we seeing famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places? Absolutely. Matter of fact, they've been ramping up for a couple of years now, just like birth pains. But he who endures to the end shall be saved, and the gospel of this kingdom will be preached in all the world to a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Has the gospel been preached in all the world? You know, I don't, I don't know, but I can tell you that uh, the Bible app people have claimed that their app has been downloaded in every country on earth. And you know what's sad? What's really just breaks my heart is the United States, you know, it's because of this country that the gospel was preached to all the nations, right? This was the gospel powerhouse. More missionaries have come out of this country than probably any other country on earth. The Bibles that have been printed more copies of the Word of God have been sold. Do you know that they removed the Bible from the New York Times bestseller? They won't let it be on there. And the reason is because if they did, it would be number one every time. It's the number one selling book of all time. More Bibles have been distributed around the world because the, you know, the United States has done so many amazing things for the gospel. But the church has laid down over the last several decades and allowed this country to be hijacked and taken over by wickedness. You know, it says that there's going to be a great falling away, a great departure. And, you know, some people try to argue that's the rapture. I'm going to save that for that argument for another day. Um, and I, I'm confident that I can show you through using the original languages uh, and things like that, that it's not actually talking about the rapture. Uh, not in that particular passage. It's talking about a falling away of the faith. And I think that we've seen that. You know, there's you know large churches, but they're not real. They're not really preaching the gospel of truth. So they're, they're just dead churches. There's been a great falling away. Whether that passage is literally talking about a falling away of the faith or a departure or whatever, either way... There's been a great falling away of the faith. And it's just sad to see that this country and how it's just been overran by demonic spirits, by wicked spirits, by spirit of filth and every foul spirit and every foul bird. It's shocking and it just stinks because, like I said, you know, this country, and I remember when I was growing up, you know, people had respect for Christians. You know, pastors used to come in and pray with us before our basketball games. You know, and I wasn't like a believer or anything, but I had respect for those men. And I never would have once thought to myself, oh, it's so terrible that these guys are coming in here and praying. But you do that today and some kid will cry foul and, you know, the pastor, you know, will never be allowed on school property again. And, uh, you know, and there'll be some counseling for the kids that were traumatized by the pastor praying. It's just a sick joke. Come, Lord Jesus, come. I can't have stand to look at this world anymore. And I'm sorry if this podcast this morning has sounded kind of like a, 
like a downer podcast, you know. It's just, man, I mean, don't you guys feel the same way? I mean, aren't you just tired of it? Aren't you just fed up with it? Aren't you tired of being told that, you know, you need to bow down to evil? And aren't you sick of watching your pastors sell out? These men who write these books. And then they go on TV and peddle lies. And call themselves pastors and then say that they need your money. And it's just, I'm, f- I'm just fed up with it, guys. I'm just, I'm so ready for the kingdom of God. You know, I used to, you know, years ago when I would pray, thy kingdom come, I didn't realize what I was really praying. But today when I say thy kingdom come, thy will be done, man, I mean it. I really want the kingdom of God to come and to come swiftly, to come quickly. Because I'm sick of my, you know, my brothers and sisters in Christ being tortured and gang raped and murdered around the world. I'm sick of watching evil trample over the good. That's why I wanted to read out of Habakkuk real quick. And I've done this several times on the show. But it's just so fitting. I'm just going to read the very first couple of verses out of Habakkuk. And then, you know, Habakkuk cries out to God and asks some tough questions. Some tough questions that I'm asking this morning. And then I want us to hear the Lord's reply. And to remember this. So chapter 1, the burden which Habakkuk, the prophet, saw, the prophet's question begins here. It says, O oh Lord, how long shall I cry and you will not hear? Even cry out to you violence and you will not save? Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? For plundering and violence are before me. There is strife and contention arises. Therefore the law is powerless. Justice never goes forth, for the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore perverse judgments proceed. So that's Habakkuk's complaint. And doesn't that sound exactly like what we're dealing with today? It's almost like this passage was meant for us. I mean, he says, how long, Father? How long shall I cry out and you will not hear? And doesn't it seem like, you know, we're watching all this happen and we're like, God, where are you? And he says, even cry out to you, violence. He's saying, I'm seeing violence all around me. Why do you show me iniquity? He's saying, and cause me to see trouble. He's saying, why do I have to look at sin all day, every day? He says, plundering, you know, theft, violence are before me, strife, contention. He says, the law is powerless. He's talking about God's law. Nobody, he's saying nobody cares about your law. Nobody obeys you. Justice never goes forth. He's saying the judges never do what's right. He says the wicked surround the righteous. Don't we see that today? And therefore perverse judgment proceeds. So that's Habakkuk's question. He's crying out to God. I feel this when I read that. Now let's listen to the, let's listen to the Lord's reply. So God hears Habakkuk, and this is what he says. He says, look among the nations and watch. Be utterly astounded, for I will work a work in your days which you would not believe, though it were told to you. So God's saying, you know what? Take a look at the nations and be astounded, because I'm getting ready to do something in your time and in your days that you wouldn't even believe if I were to let you in on it. You think that maybe that's what God's saying to us today? He's saying, look out there. Check out. Check out. Be, you are going to be astounded. I'm getting ready to do something in your days. I'm getting ready to work a work in your days. You wouldn't. I can't even tell you about it. Because if I were to tell you what I'm about to do, you wouldn't believe it because it's going to be so astounding. That should encourage us. And I really think this is a message for us today. We look at the world, it's burning to the ground, seems like there's no hope. But God's saying, I'm getting ready to do something 
I'm getting ready to work a work in your days. You wouldn't believe it even if you were told. Now he goes on in this passage to say, you know what? I'm raising up some heathens, some people who don't even know anything about me. I'm raising them up and I'm bringing them to bring harsh judgment upon the earth. And I wonder if we don't see this happening in our world today. He says, For indeed I am raising up Chaldeans, a bitter and hasty nation, which marches through the breadth of the earth to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity proceed from themselves. Their horses are swifter than leopards, more fierce than evening wolves. Their chargers charge ahead. Their cavalry comes from afar. They fly as an eagle that hastens to eat. They come for violence. Their faces are set like the east wind. They gather captives like sand. They scoff at kings and princes and scorned by them. They deride every strong horde, horde, hold. For they heap up earthen mounds and seize it. Then his mind changes. And he transgresses and commits offense, ascribing this power to his God. It's interesting that he changes from talking about the Chaldeans to changing about a singular person here. Then his mind changes and he transgresses. He commits offense, ascribing this power to his God. You know, folks, I don't know what the future holds exactly. But I believe that we're about to see some of God's greatest works ever in our days. You know, we're, we're the generation that's going to see the grand finale of this thing. You know, you think about all the amazing things that were witnessed before, right? Oh, man, it must have been awesome to see the, the Red Sea part, right? That amazing miracle. Or the plagues of Egypt and how God, you know, protected his people but brought judgment on the wicked. You know, we can go down the list of of amazing things that's happened throughout history where God has shown up in some crazy supernatural ways. You know, the wall of Jericho, um, you know, the list goes on and on. But I think some of the things that we're going to witness God do like I said, like the grand finale, beyond anything that anyone's ever imagined. You know, there's even a part in Revelation where John's told not to even write something down. We don't have all the information. God hasn't privied us to every little detail. You know, we have some general information. That way, when things happen, we can look at that thing and say, okay, this is what Jesus was talking about. We try to act like we know what's going to happen in advance, but we never really do. And the prophets never really have. It's only after they've seen what God promised that they say, oh, there it is. We need to be encouraged because the end is near. Jesus really is coming back like he promised. And I think God's about to do a work in our days that is so astounding it's so amazing uh, that we wouldn't believe it even if we were told. That's the podcast for you guys this morning. I pray that it blessed you and that it didn't bring you down too much. I'm just frustrated with this wicked world, man. I'm ready for the kingdom of God. I'm so over this. Um, if you love this show, if you like it, if it's blessed you, if you want to support it, you can go to truthfed.com, click on the support tab at the top. Um, this is 100% listener supported. We don't do ads. We don't do, uh, we don't push products or sell anything. It's all supported by you. Um, if you're new to the show, because I know we're reaching out to get on some other platforms, you, um, uh, the show runs on Thursdays and you can go to truthfed.com to find all the, uh, old archives. Uh, so on Thursday, we do a show similar to like what you just heard on Tuesday, we do scripture reading and commentary. We read through scripture and we just talk about it. Um, I've done the whole book of Revelation, the whole book of Enoch, the whole book of Habakkuk. Uh, we just finished the book of First Peter. And next, starting next week, we're going to start uh, talking about some things in the book of Jasher. 
And I haven't decided if I just want to start reading Jasher from the very beginning and just read through it, which will take, you know, probably a few months, or if I just want to pick certain topics I haven't really decided. I guess I'll make a decision by Tuesday. Uh, so Tuesday and Thursday is when the podcast runs. Uh, you can find the YouTube channel also with all the archive. Just go to truthfed.com forward slash YouTube. So that's uh, that's what's going on with this uh, with this podcast. I pray that it blesses you, that it pierces your heart. I hope that even though this this podcast started out bleak, that it gives you some encouragement to watch and to wait and to be ready for what God's about to do. And I don't know about you, but I want to be focused on God, not focused on this world, because I want to be a part of whatever He's doing. Don't you? Don't you want to be a part of what the King is doing? Don't you want to be about his business when he returns? Don't you want to be found working and washing? I do. I certainly do. Peace and grace be with all of you. Until next time, God bless.